For the next four examples, we're going to be working with complex numbers. And one of the things that we need to remember is that a complex number involves this imaginary number called i, and the definition of i is that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So this allows us to work with square roots of negative numbers. So the first thing we want to do is realize that the square root of negative 9 is the same as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. And the square root of negative 125 could be thought of as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 125. So the square root of negative 1, we already said, is the same as i. So each of these factors becomes i. The square root of 9 is 3. So we have i times 3 times i. And the square root of 125 can be thought of as the square root of 25 times 5. And then the square root of uh, 25 is just 5. So when we simplify this, we have 3 times i times i times 5 times the square root of 5. And then this becomes 3 times 5 times the square root of 5. And then i times i gives us i squared. So we have 15 times the square root of 5 times i squared. Now, i squared, if you think about it, comes from taking this expression and squaring both sides. So if I take negative 1, the square root of negative 1, and square it, that would be the same as i squared. So i squared is the same as just negative 1. So this becomes 15 times the square root of 5 times negative 1, or negative 15 times the square root of 5. One thing you want to be sure of is that you don't multiply these numbers together first because if you do that, your final answer would not be negative 15 times the square root of 5. It would be positive 15 times the square root of 5. So make sure that you um, simplify the imaginary components first.